It may please the court, I am going to deal with uh, issue number six amongst the nine issues that were crafted by the court for purposes of determination. And uh, yes, and uh, my line of friends, Mr. Firoz Norji, will deal with the issues uh, captured uh, in number eight, uh, uh, eight and nine. And my line of friend, Mr. Mwangi, will deal with the issue number six. My line of friend, Mr. Philip Murgor, will deal with the issue number one, two, and part of three. And my line of friend, Ms. Julie Soweto, will deal with the issues three, four, five. The, we appear, I appear together with my colleagues for the first and second petitioners in the consolidated petition. The petition was filed on the 22nd of August this year following the declaration of the results of the presidential elections that were held in the general elections on the 9th of August 2022. And those results were declared on the 15th of August, uh, 2022. Following that declaration, the petitioners, the first and second petitioners, were aggrieved with that announcement and consequently filed this uh, petition. The petition is accompanied with a host of affidavits and uh, it may please the court, I'll refer to about five or six uh, affidavits in my address. But as a matter of opening, uh, I would want to deal with some constitutional issues as set out in the various articles of the Constitution. My lords and my ladies, after many years, the Kenyan people came about with the Constitution 2010. They enacted this, uh, the Constitution 2010, and as, uh, 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 as opposed to the previous occasions, we had a Constitution with, which was enacted by the people in which they dec declared their sovereign authority. Therefore, anything done in the name of the Republic in exercise of powers that are uh, spelt out in the Constitution is based on donated or delegated authority as set out in Article 1 of the uh, Constitu uh, Constitution. Now, my lords and my ladies, it is important to put into consideration uh, Article 2 on the supremacy of the Constitution together with Article 3, which talks about the defense of the Constitution. As opposed to the previous periods when we had uh, a, a Constitution which was negotiated at the time of independence with the colonial authorities, this Constitution established a republic in which the doctrine of suppression of powers uh, was embedded. And more particularly, uh, lords and my ladies, the, in this constitution, there are several constitution bodies and agencies that were created, which includes the first respondent, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. And in accordance with the dictates of the Constitution, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, just like any other body established under the Constitution, and for that matter, any person who resides in the Republic of Kenya, 
is required not only to recognize the supremacy of the Constitution, but act in accordance of the Constitution and in defense of the Constitution. Under Article 249, all independent offices and uh, independent commissions are required to respect the sovereignty of the people and also to promote constitutionalism. This is important because uh, Article 249, as read with Article 88 of the Constitution, which vests powers uh, on or to the Independent um, Electoral Boundaries Commission, uh, requires that uh, those powers must be exercised in accordance uh, with, with the Constitution. Now, my lords and my ladies, the story that emerges out of the events that occurred on the 9th of August this year and subsequently following to the 15th of August uh, upon the declaration of the Constitution uh, of the elections, the presidential elections, goes contrary to the established uh, or uh, established provisions uh, in the Constitution and uh, will enumerate those violations at the appropriate time. But in opening, I want to say this, my ladies and my lords, that this grievance that we place before you, the highest court in the land, is not just a conspiracy theory. It is not just any ordinary event. If you look at the evidence that is placed before you in totality, we invite your Lordship to come to the conclusion that what happened on the 9th of August this year and the subsequent events that followed on the 15th of August uh, mark a pattern of violations against the Constitution in order to undermine the authority of the sovereign will of the people and in effect uh, 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 preside, that is the commission, pres preside over an election that in effect did not represent the will of the people of, of Kenya. Now, in saying this, uh, my ladies and my lords, you will be taken through a host of evidence borne out in the affidavits that show clearly that the Electoral Commission, just like they did in 2017, did not preside over an election that was in accord with the requirements of the Constitution as laid out in Article 81 of the Constitution. Article 81 of the Constitution requires that an election held in the Republic of Kenya should abide by the general principles uh, set out in that article, and more particularly, Article 81, sub eight, sub, uh, 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 Article 81E, that the elections must be free and fair, and f uh, Roman 4, the elections must be transparent, and Roman 5 of that article, that the election should be administered in an impartial, neutral, efficient, accurate, and accountable manner. My lords and my ladies, I want to emphasize the words accurate and accountable manner. And, that, and those provisions in Article 81 read together with Article 86, which requires that uh, 
at every election, the Independent Electoral Commission shall ensure that whatever voting method that is used, the system is simple, accurate, again, the word accurate, verifiable, secure, accountable, and transparent. And more importantly, that the vote cast accounted, tabulated, and the results announced promptly, and that is at the polling, uh, at the polling uh, stations. My lords, you would notice that uh, as we appear before you today, we have something that has never happened in this country, that you have a commission that is divided right in the middle. That speaks to a, a dysfunctional constitutional body that is not capable, leave alone the transgressions that we are, we, are, we are going to talk about. But we are talking about an electoral commission that is dysfunctional and cannot be able to preside over an election that would give it the stamp of legality and legitimacy as spelled out in, in the Constitution. And I think that is a matter that this court should not re, uh, disregard. And we'll come to that a little later in, in our address. Indeed, the Tower of Babel has been brought down by the appearance of two factions within the Commission uh, before your Lordships and, and, and my ladies. And this in event has created a situation where no Kenyan can believe that uh, the pro pronouncement of the first uh, of the ninth, I think the second respondent, Mr. William Samoy Ruto, yeah. as president elect. I came out of circumstances uh, as envisioned in the Constitution of the Republic of, of Kenya. And, Your Lordships, we would uh, invite you, and my land friends are going to address you on this point as to what really happened within uh, the Commission. Now, coming to the subject matter that I'm going to address you on in the question of the issue number seven that states that uh, the declared president-elect, uh, whether the declared president-elect attained 50% plus one vote of all the votes cast in accordance with Article 138 sub article 4 of the constitution we, we want to persuade you that the second respondent never attained that constitutional threshold and going back to the constitution on that particular article article 138 sub article 4 it was made part of the constitution by the framers of the constitution to give legitimacy to anybody elected as president to the effect that he had wide, widespread support uh, of the Kenyan people and that is evidenced by the requirement that the president-elect must have at least 25 percent of the votes cast in each of the more than half of the counties. We are not dealing with that point. We're dealing with uh, Article 4A, that it is a requirement, mandatory requirement, that the person elected as president must receive more than half of all the votes cast in the election. Now, talking about numbers in those two provisions speaks to the need for accuracy and accountability to give an election, the legitimacy that uh, the holder of that office would carry while exercising 
the powers of the President of the Republic of Kenya. And it's not an idle matter because we went through an ex experience, uh, the experience uh, before the enactment and pro proclamation of this constitution that a person would be elected uh, by way of a simple majority and in circumstances in which you would find that the, the person elected as president did not um, uh, garner more than half the votes which are cast in a presidential election. So this is an important matter. And the difficulty about uh, this particular article is that it requires at the end of an election before the declaration that the commission carries out some mathematics, some mathematical calculation and computation based on proper returns of the votes that were cast in the polling stations and transmitted, as it were, the results thereof to the National Tallying Center and verified accordingly in terms of the uh, Article 38 and uh, the, elections, uh, the Elections Act. Now, my lords and my ladies, my starting point would be the fact that in this election, it was declared that, uh, and that is found in paragraph 7 of our petition, that the second respondent in the declared result garnered 7,176,141 uh, votes, which according to the Electoral Commission represented 50.49% of the votes cast uh, in the election. Now, this figure would be correct depending on the calculations that were carried out or computation done by the Electoral Commission based on the votes cast during the elections held on the 9th of August 2022. Now, the complaint on this in this particular regard is contained in paragraph uh, 43 to paragraph uh, 47, uh, 48 of the petition. And for purposes of clarity, with your permission, my lords and my ladies, I would want to read out uh, those particular paragraphs of the petition so that I can properly put it in context. Paragraph 43 abars that the, first, the number of voters who turned out to vote in the general election held on the 9th of August 2022 remains indeterminate. The res second respondent has been issuing contradictory figures on the voter turnout. On the 9th of August 2022, on or about 16 hours, 1600 hours, one hour before the close of polls, the first responded reported through various public news media outlets the voter turnout around the country was fairly low and was at an average of 52% of the registered number of voters. On 10th of August 2022, at all about 13 hours, in his first media briefing to the public, following the close of polling, their second res respondent announced that the total voter turnout in the general election as captured in the electronic voter identification 
uh, kits, that is the Kim kits, was 65.4%, equivalent to 14 million. 466,779 voters. Roman 3, the second respondent, however, indicated that he expected the above number to rise once the number of votes identified manually was taken into account. Contrary to the above declaration and reason reasonable legitimate expect expectation, the, the final voter turnout captured and declared in the final results of the presidential election in Form 3C is stated uh, to be 14 million, 213, uh, uh, 213, 137 votes, which is absurdly lower and not higher as anticipated. Notwithstanding a computation using addition of the valid votes in figures for the presidential elections, candidates in the ag aggregate results shows that the total number of valid votes is 14,213,027. Now, my ladies and my lords, the first point that is being made there, that if you look at the results as announced by the Electoral Commission, and what is stated in Form C, as the turnout of voters, and that is 14,213,137 votes. If you compute or add the number of vote cast for each candidate individually, that is the petitioner, the second respondent, and the two other candidates, that the figure that results is not the figure that was stated in Form 34C. The figure is 14 million, 213, and 037. That is the first point. And this is important because as we proceed, we are going to demonstrate that uh, the number of voters who took part in the elections and the number of votes cast in the election is indeterminate and is a moving target. It keeps on shifting. And I, I, I invite your lordships and my ladies to look and invite, I equally invite the court to calculate the number of votes garnered by each of the presidential candidates, the figures do not agree at all. And therefore, the first point uh, of, of, of reference, as it were, is that the computation of the figure 50 plus 1 was based on a wrong computation of the total votes cast uh, as it were, and as proclaimed by the chairman of the independent uh, elec el el elections and boundaries uh, commission. Now, this may be a mathematical paradox or even a conundrum. The numbers of voters who turn out to vote as declared by the Independent uh, Electoral and Boundaries Commission should be the same as the number of voters that are declared emanating from the Kim's kids because the source of the number of voters that have cast their votes can be garnered in two ways by looking at the numbers as recorded in the Kim kits, or at the end of the election exercise by computing the number of votes cast in the election. And you, my, my ladies and, uh, and my lords, you would find that uh, in this election, again, if you take the number of votes 
or, or rather of the voter turnout, which was 65.4%, 65.4%, as against the number of registered voters in Kenya, that, my, my lords and my ladies, would give you the figure of those who turned out to vote. Because the, the percentage of the registered voters who are declared as having turned out to vote must be the same as the number of voters actually whose uh, votes are counted as valid uh, votes cast, and of course minus uh, what are characterized as uh, rejected uh, votes. So, my lords, if you look at uh, that uh, particular point, and we're going to go through this one, you will find that uh, the chairman of the Electoral Commission in his announcement of the final results as borne out in Form 34C, and his announcement of the turnout of, of voters, which is recorded as at 65.4%, is at variance. And therefore, his calculation of the results based on the percentages uh, cannot be correct. In this exercise, I invite your. In, in this exercise, I, I invite the court to look at uh, the affidavit of one Edgar Oko Otumba. Uh, that affidavit is two, two affidavits, a supplementary affidavit, and uh, uh, the first affidavit which he filed on the 22nd of uh, August. And my lords, in that affidavit, he makes a case, and Mr. Otumba is, uh, has got a doctorate degree in applied st statistics from Maseno University, and indeed he did assist this court in the previous pet petition in 2017. And uh, he, he talks to the difficulties, sorry. that uh, confronts us in terms of the various announcements that uh, the chairman of the Electoral Commission made. And he states that on the 9th of August 2022, the respondent issued a, con a communique, that is in paragraph 10 of his affidavit, on the day of the election, that the total voter turnout at 4 p.m. nationwide was at 56.17%. Uh, and that statement update is the next to the affidavit sworn by the second petitioner, uh, uh, Madam Mata Karua. Then at the close of the voting, the first respondent again issued a statement that the total number of, of voter turnout based on the Kim's kit was 65.4%. Which culminates in a total of 14,466,779 votes. Uh, and that communique is uh, borne out in the, in, the, in the affidavit again of the uh, second uh, petitioner. In an affidavit that is sworn uh, on behalf of the uh, petitioners, uh, first and second peti uh, petitioners, Mr. Nyang Nyangasi Oduo, in his affidavit, uh, he talks to the f uh, Form 34C, uh, and I referred to this, I'd referred to this earlier, 
where the total number of vote casts is 14 million 213. Now, the same Mr. Edgar Otumba uh, saw a supplementary affidavit on the um, um, I think this affidavit was sworn on uh, just a minute. on the 20th of August 2002. And I invite you, lady, my ladies and your lordships, to look at this affidavit because it an analyzes several scenarios including a scenario, scenarios where the reject, re, rejected votes are not computed and scenarios where the declaration made uh, by the uh, chairman of the electoral commission as to the manual votes which were cast, which were recorded uh, 86,889, uh, and uh, where those votes recorded as manual votes are, take, are computed together with the votes that were, uh, uh, were transmitted electronically. And then scenarios that uh, would include the constituencies where the votes were declared later, including Ella's uh, constituency. Now, the, the central point, and, and I want to make this point again, that the case that we are trying to make out is that if you look at the declaration made by the chairman as to the voter turnout, that will give you, as a percentage of the total number of registered voters, it will give you the number of voters that turned out to vote in the election. As opposed to another way of arriving at the same result, simply counting the number of voters that were recorded to have voted and cast their vote in the election. It is an equation that must agree in a mass submission. If the total number of voters that take part in the election do not agree with the votes that are counted as cast in accordance with Article 138.4. If they don't agree, then it means that the results of that election are not accurate, they are not transparent, and they are not uh, accountable. And therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm inviting your ladyships and your lordship to go through this affidavit of Mr. Edgar Uko Otumba because he lays out clearly the several scenarios in which it is quite clear the, sec the, 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 the second respondent, one William Samoe Ruto, could not have garnered uh, 50% plus one of the vote cast in the election. And uh, since all that is in our submissions and is in the two affidavits that I refer to, I invite your ladyships and your lordships to, to go through and uh, you find that it is indeed very compelling, the analysis given out by uh, Dr. Edgar Otumba. Now, your ladyship and my, your ladyship, my lords, I'd also invite you to look at the affidavit of one Celestine Anyango Opio, and in that affidavit, which enumerates several constituencies, uh, including Chipa Lungu and many others where in terms of the results as transmitted 
to the public portal, there was a systematic deduction of the votes cast for the first petitioner. And the same number of votes that were deducted from the petitioner were added to the votes of the second respondent. And the unique thing about this scheme is that uh, the number of votes cast, the total number of votes cast, remained the same. The, differences, the difference only was to the extent that the same number of votes that was deducted from uh, the petitioner were given to the second uh, respondent. And I leave that, your lordships, to look through when you retire, because the, uh, the uh, Form 34 is, in respect of those uh, particular polling stations, uh, attached to the affidavit of um, Salisin Anyango appeal. Um, there is also the affidavit, two affidavits from Arnold Ocheng Oginga, and this is particularly important uh, because it contains discrepancies of the results in several areas and would uh, affect the results of the elections. In uh, paragraph 16, uh, up to the end, he goes uh, out analyzing areas where there were discrepancies. And uh, you would notice, my lots and my ladies, that in totality, the discrepancies accounted for votes which are more than 140,000 votes. And in our submission, that has an impact on the result of the elections as declared. And uh, I invite your, your, your lordships and my ladies to, to look at the, those particular uh, uh, analysis and annexures attached to the affidavit of Arnold Oginga. In the same way, uh, in a further affidavit, Mr. Arnold Ching Oginga carries out an analysis in response to the responses to the petition by the respondents. And while once again, you would notice the number of votes that were being manipulated in order to secure a result that would favor the second respondent. And we have attached the relevant documentation, the, the forms uh, showing the results uh, from 34As, 34Bs, uh, those particular forms. And finally, the uh, Form 34B, which uh, is a collation of votes at the constituency uh, uh, tallying uh, centers. Now, my lords, I would uh, conclude by saying that uh, unlike many elections, this particular election, there was deceit there was manipulation, and all this was premeditated and made possible by the attack, if I may put it that way, on the IT structure and system of the Electoral Commission. The way that the Commission was able to deal with the forms when uploaded and downloaded, staged, transmitted, deleted, 
all this in totality, if, if you look at the case we put before you, are, my lords and my ladies, uh, set out in the affidavits that I refer to, shows an election that was rigged in favor of the second respondent. And on, on that basis, my lords, we urge that you nullify the, the elections on the basis of the fact that uh, the second respondent did not attain more than 50% plus one of the vote, uh, votes cast in the election. I, I thank you. I now invite uh, Ms. Julie Soweto to deal with the second limb of our submissions. Good morning, my ladies and my, my 